when you guys got Jim Carrey to, to agree to work on this, I know he, he kind of worked with you guys on The Voice and, mm -hmm. and, and that kind of influenced the, the way Horton looked. I mean, yeah. what kind of process did you guys have with, with working with Jim? Well, we uh, started, we sat down with him before we even got into the uh, recording studio and we, we talked about his character. We talked about our commitment to this story and, and where we wanted to go uh, with the story and, and how we envisioned Horton physically, you know, that yeah, he's got a big imagination and is a guy that is going to get up and be physically big. We wanted to be able to get up and walk around on his back legs and yeah. have crazy imagination. Absolutely. Yeah. I think one of the things that we didn't do is we didn't try and make Horton look like Jim. We made Horton look like Horton from the book. Yeah. But... You know, there is the story of, you know, we designed Horton, we built him, and then we started recording with Jim, and our lead animator, Dave Tars came back and said, you got to make his mouth bigger. Because Jim so is we had so elastic. Because, yeah, when we, they were studying the tapes of him recording and stuff, and they were like, his mouth's got to be bigger, so we made his mouth bigger. <laughs> but what's kind of amazing is that, you know, we know this guy, this actor who just, I mean, he does these far-out voices, and but he, I felt like he kind of held, not that he held back his voice, but his voice is really kind of subtle, yeah. and in a way, it's a really wonderful performance. It thing. is a great performance. Yeah. The, the, the thing that we realized early on was that to keep Horton's emotional core, to keep his heart the heart of that character, this warm, big-hearted guy, he had to have that sort of, he's, he's got an innocent way of looking at the world, mm -hmm. and he's, he's an intelligent guy, but he's more childlike in that his life hasn't been ruined by like having mean bosses right. and divorce and stuff like that. You know, children don't really have a social government or governor, they'll say embarrassing stuff in front of their parents, like, why is that man so fat, or something like that. You know, kids do that, and their parents are like, oh my God, I feel terrible. Yeah. <laughs> well, we wanted Horton to be kind of like that, and in, in that he doesn't see anything wrong with talking to a spec, yeah. you know? And, and I think that Jim brought that amazing emotional center. I find people have said to me like it's you you forget that it's Jim and that's perfect. Yeah. Right. And you know, it was a wonder. I mean, it was really nice to, to kind of see that because I was afraid. Oh yeah. When you watch a film like this, you're like, oh no, you know, like. No, you like, want him to have that center, but then you know he takes little side journeys yeah. at times, and, and he can get big and he can be fun, but you know if you're going to be rooting for this guy all the way through to the end, you know, and Horton gets himself into you know a really challenging situation, and you want to be with him. You know, if if we play it wild all the way along, you know, there's a it's risk like, of you really, you know, rooting for him. Yeah, it's be like eating a bowl of icing. But flip yeah. side, you have Steve Carell, who's actually I was just talking, he's a really calm, oh, kind yeah. of dry person. I mean, and he'll throw, the, <laughs> but like, he's hilarious. So, so yeah. how <laughs> how do how do you work with somebody who I don't know, like well, how do you direct somebody who maybe? Well, like, he's he's um, you know, it took it took a couple sessions to get to find where the buttons are with with Steve, but he's such a naturally hilarious guy. But we found that, you know, it's often the spaces and gaps that he leaves, yeah. or just the fact that he'll go in between something. Or, you know, when he says, okay, Horton, fake name. You know, he's just got this, he's just this sort of set of things that he does that once we, you find him, and he really found the, the center of the mayor beautifully. He's just, he brought such humanity to the mayor. You feel so bad for this microscopic little dude that's talking to a giant invisible talking elephant in the sky. I mean, well, in that role too, you know, the mayor, is much more like we are faced with a real challenge you know he struggles with doing the right thing you know he does the right thing in the end he really pulls the town together but he's more like you or I uh, you know Horton is this character in his belief and his ability to stand up in the face of complete adversity you know he's what we aspire to be and uh, I think you know as Jimmy said there's that humanity that Steve Carell brings uh, to the character that's just perfect for that role. I actually attended one of your road shows in Taiwan, and they, oh, yeah. um, they they were describing this kind of new technology where you were able to, I don't know, like the hair was able to be done. Uh, did that free the kind of uh, art of the world that you could create in this film that, that was, that maybe could not have done it in, in, in these movies before? Or well, what? you know, I think one of the things that we settled upon, and, and we had a, you know, kind of a word for it, that it would, you know, this world needed to be entertainingly correct. And I, th I found a quote from Dr. Seuss, a f you know, a few weeks ago that he looked at his body of work and he said, you know, I try to create things that are, 
you know, that have logical insanity. You know, so you, you start with that foundation and you know that, you know, you've got the ability to, to be a little broader in animation, uh, to create a world that... A lot broader. Yeah, that, you know, and that's the fun in animation for, for us. You know, why recreate this room and a bunch of characters that look like you and I? You know, let's take the audience to a place like Whoville that they've never seen that before. That you can't go to. Um, yeah. A lot of the people that I saw the film with, they were really happy with the fact that there's this underlying, you know, story about how, uh, you know, uh, well, I don't know, there, there's all these political implications that, that you know, Geisel had written during, when mm -hmm. he wrote this. So the fact that you guys kept a lot of that. Kept it all. Uh, was that difficult to kind of, you know, translate from a book, you know, a book that's 10 pages well, to... to the, the book has a great theme, a person's a person no matter how small. And when we expanded the story, we hung our hat on that theme. Every story decision we made, we went back to that theme. You know, when we, we added the story of the mayor and Jojo, you know, because in the book they skip over the mayor, you know, or he skipped over the mayor, um, we, we, you know, we built that story up. The mayor has to learn a person's a person no matter how small through his relationship with Jojo before he can find Jojo and they can save the town. The kangaroo has to learn that from her, about her own son, Rudy, who's too big to be in the pouch. All the new stuff that we put into the movie, we just went back thematically to that idea. And it's, you know, it, it logically lends itself yeah. to being a great story. It's got a great ending. It's, you know, it's dramatic. It kind of lays out with a beginning, middle, and end. Yeah. And uh, those themes are universal and, and timeless. Timeless. You know, tolerance, uh, you know, it's as relevant today as it was in 1954. And it will be relevant 100 years from now. Last quick question. Uh, Vlad casting Will Arnett and how he's wonderful. I mean, because that guy's just... <laughs> so hilarious. He's he so smart and funny. That guy, I literally hang out, hang out with him, like in, just eating lunch, and I'm laughing my head off because yeah. he's so ridiculous. He, you know, we developed Horton with Jim. We developed the mayor with Steve. We developed all these characters. That dude walked in with that. He walked into the studio and said, "Hey, bro, how's it going, bro? <laughs> what are you talking about, man?" And we started mashing up all those like ridiculous sayings. Yeah. What a burn on you, Horton! You know, he's so ridiculous. Oh, yeah. It's definitely he, highlight. It's great. <laughs> he's great. Thank you very much. It's really cool talking to you guys. Cheers, Thanks man. So Thank much. you. Thanks uh -huh. so much.